Hi, it's Sergeant Julie. As we talked about before, we're gonna be doing some online videos that recreate some of the things that kids like to come to our police station for. We know a lot of you are stuck at home when schools are closed, my kids too. So we wanted to come up with some activities that can help you learn at home. One of the things that I thought would be really fun is one of my favorite activities, which is dusting for fingerprints with chocolate. So for this activity, you're going to need a piece of paper. If you have gloves, you can wear them. Something smooth, I'm using a small glass jar. You can use a plate or a coffee cup or a glass at your house. You're going to need some kind of brush. I'm using one of our actual fingerprint powder brushes because we have some of them here at the police station, but you could probably even use a fine paintbrush or a fine sponge for this type of activity. And then um, you're gonna need a roll of tape. Some big pieces of tape work really, really well, not skinny tape, but fat tape. And then my favorite part of this whole activity is chocolate. So fingerprint powder is kind of expensive and it's not really good to breathe in a lot of, but I think chocolate smells wonderful. So when I teach people how to fingerprint, I use a jar of cocoa powder. So what you wanna do is first, we have to make some fingerprints. So what I usually do is before I put my gloves on, I will have someone touch the glass item for me. Now I've already touched this one and left a nice good fingerprint right here. Now if we were detectives trying to find a suspect, we wouldn't exactly know where the fingerprint is. So this activity is kind of fun because I know where the fingerprint is. Um, but if you pick up your item, look around, make sure it's clean, find a good spot, and place your fingerprint. Now this is the part where if you're working on a big investigation, you'll put your gloves on because you don't want to put your own fingerprints in a crime scene, right? So I put on my fancy gloves. They match my uniform. And I pick up my evidence item and I see that there is something that looks like a fingerprint right there. So I'm gonna reveal it. I take my brush, I dab it in my cocoa powder, and I wouldn't do this in your bedroom, maybe the kitchen, and then I dust that powder on top of where I think the fingerprint is. Now it's gonna be really hard for you to see at home, but I promise what I now see is a chocolate fingerprint on my jar. Now I could take a picture of this, but that's kind of hard to analyze for the lab. So what we do is we take one of our big pieces of tape, now I got them ready ahead of time, and we're gonna put it on top of that dusty chocolate fingerprint. We're gonna spread it right on top and try to smooth it as much as possible. Hopefully there's no air bubbles in there. Make sure I have all around the edges. And this is where your piece of paper comes in handy. I'm gonna take my piece of paper and I'm gonna slowly peel off that tape and it lifted up my chocolate fingerprint. And I'm gonna take that tape and spread it as smooth as possible on my piece of paper. And now I have a chocolate fingerprint. Now, if you were working a case for me, junior detectives, it's really important that we write down where this fingerprint came from because sometimes when I'm searching a crime scene that maybe someone took a jar of cookies that didn't belong to them, I might take 10 or 12 fingerprints. And it's important for me to know where they came from. So this is actually one of our Redmond Police Department latent print cards. And what you would do is you write Redmond Police Department on the top. You can write whatever police department you want for your at-home experiment. We write down our case number. We write down the item number. This is gonna be fingerprint number one. And then we draw a picture of our glass item. I used a jar, so you'll see here I drew a picture of a jar. And I drew where I found the fingerprint that I lifted so that when I'm analyzing this later on, I know exactly where the print I lifted was. Now, this is an older print that I took. Might be hard to see, but my tape is on the back. So for today's fingerprint, I put the fingerprint tape on the back, I flip it over, and I write down Redmond Police, my case number. It's important to write down what the date and the time is so I can look back, because sometimes we work a lot of investigations and we wanna keep them straight. And then I draw a picture of my jar. Doesn't have to be to scale, but I do my best job. And I draw where on that jar I found the fingerprint. I hope you enjoyed tagging along with me today. 
This is a really fun experiment to use at home. Again, what you're going to need are a piece of paper, a table that you can get a little bit messy, some kind of smooth glass surface works the best. Plastic works too. Um, I like to use these little jars because I have them, but you can use a coffee cup, a plate, anything you have in your kitchen that your parents don't mind you using. You're going to need some tape. Packing tape works really well. It has to be clear because you have to be able to see your fingerprint through it. Some kind of brush, a paintbrush will work because I imagine you don't have a fingerprint brush at home. And then some kind of fine powder. And like I said, I use cocoa powder because I think it's fun to do fingerprints with chocolate. We would love for you to try this experiment at home. Um, if you're going to be our junior detectives, feel free to tag us in some of your posts and show us if, that you had fun with this experiment. Um, and we're having fun learning online alongside of you. Thank you, Redmond community. Stay strong, stay friendly, and stay safe.